let's begin. So for today, today's Tuesday. I'm getting my days mixed up now. Not Monday. So today, your lab 10 and your lab final are due today. The lab final is online. Um, I have some of the discussions graded. I'll have them graded tonight. I'm going to stay upgrading those. So you'll have tomorrow to do them. What I'm going to do for the rest of them is I'm going to copy and paste your discussion into a Word document and leave you comments on the Word document and repost it to you. Okay? Huh? Because it's <laughs> cause that is easier than scrolling up and down. So... I will, so it'll be attached, it'll be a reply to your post. You'll see that I was the one that replied. And um, you'll see it attached as a Word document, okay? Uh, and then you'll have all tomorrow to edit those. And let's see, chapter 9 homework is due tomorrow at midnight. Some of you have started on it. You can see chapter 9 is actually very similar to chapter 8 for the most part. So, that's probably how you were able to start on it. Okay, next one. Uh, today, we'll do as much of Chapter 9 as possible. We'll finish Chapter 9 tomorrow, and then we'll review a little bit. Uh, remember that um, the final is going to be taking, taken from your sapling homework. Okay. So those are the pools of questions, so you know exactly where everything's coming from, okay? And so go over those. If you go on sapling, even if you've already turned it in, it was already due, you can print it out without the answers, okay? Then you can work them out, and then the, you'll see online the answers are posted, okay? So if you want to try it without the answers, just print them out on paper, work them out, and then check it online with the homework. Um, and the final exam is Thursday at 2. I haven't finished writing it yet, but if I was going to guess, about oh, 25. It's worth 150 points. Yes. This Thursday. I did have one question, though. I was trying to add up the points. There's always something that goes weird. Uh, I was just trying to figure out exactly how many points it would for 25. Uh, let me, sh I can tell you here in a second. Did you have another question over there while I pull this up? You get what? Uh huh. There you go. So you go to solutions and you can still see the hints apparently. And uh, organic two starts next Wednesday. So you have your final in here on Thursday and then you have off until next Wednesday. Uh, points, that's what you asked me about. Grade book. We know I don't want anybody to see anybody's grade. Sorry. Oh. It's, oh, I was probably, did you say it was supposed to be 1250? I don't know what I did. Obviously, I didn't calculate right. It's it's 1,205. It says the current breakdown. And so, let me see on here. That's if you did the tutorial thing. I haven't added it yet. So, if I go 1,205 times 0.895, 1,078.5 for an A. And if you want to know for a B, do 1,205 times 0.795. 
and a C would be times 0.695. Ten seventy-eight. Okay, so the introduction here. This chapter deals with alkynes. So what's an alkyne? A triple bond. Uh, remember there's two elements of unsaturation for each triple bond. And what you're going to find is not all, but a lot of the reactions are similar to chapter 8. Okay? The only difference is that they occur twice, because we have a triple bond instead of a double bond. So um, a lot of the reactions are the same. Again, not all of them. No nomenclature. Uh, so what you're going to do is very similar to alkene. You're going to find the longest uh, chain that includes the triple bond. And really the biggest difference is instead of naming it like ene, like pentene, uh, butene, whatever, you're going to name it ine. So butyne, hexine. And what's nice about triple bonds is that uh, there's no cis trans, no EZ. It's just a triple bond. Okay? And then, you know, give the branches. So, again, the highest priority will always be your triple bond. So, that will determine the numbering. So, let's look at a few of them to see here. Okay, those are horrible examples because we haven't done those. Okay, let me just make one up. <laughs> Okay, maybe something like this. Okay, find the longest chain that includes the triple bond. Six. Do y'all see that? You actually have to go up here. So what would, how would we name six? Hex. And then since this is a triple bond, you're going to put ein, Y-N-E. Now where is the triple bond? What number? Two. So we could number here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Or a number from over here, one, two, three, four. And you're always going to choose whichever number is the lowest for the triple bond. It doesn't matter where the branches are. It matters where the triple bond is. So this is 2. And what is this branch here? Methyl. And what number is it on, according to how we numbered it? 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. There's no E or Z with a triple bond. It, yeah, it's planar. So if I actually drew this properly, if I can, here, here. No, and that one would be straight too, so I'm, not, I'm still not doing it correct. <laughs> Something like that. Anyway, these right here, the two branches, if you want, coming off will be 180 degrees. So there's no, they're not pointing up or down. or any, They're straight across. So um, there's no E or Z ever. So this, like what we did right here is about as hard as I can make it. I mean, I guess I can throw in some extra branches or something like that. But, I mean, it's essentially this. Uh, you find the longest chain that includes the triple bond. Number the triple bond um, where it's at the closest end, so like one, two. And then number your branches. No EZ, no cis or trans. 
You like this? Yeah. <laughs> so again, maybe the hardest I can do is throw in an extra branch. You know, like a, well, I know then I would make it longer. Right here, you know, put an ethyl, oh no, I can't even do that. Okay, but I could throw in another branch somewhere <laughs> where I don't ruin this. Um, but that, I mean, that's all the naming there is. So it's similar to like alkanes and alkenes. Um, easier than alkenes because there's no cis trans or anything. Uh, the properties of these, so let's look at this. Um, if I'm just looking at alkynes, okay, something like this, is there any electronegative atom in there? No. So does it have the uh, dipole interactions? No. Uh, any hydrogen bonding? No. Uh, so what's the only um, intermolecular force? Dispersion. And the same rules apply. So do we want it to have higher dispersion forces, stronger? Do we want it larger or smaller? Larger, and do we want branches or no branches? No branches. Okay. So alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes have the same exact trends. Only dispersion forces, you want them long without branches. And that'll increase the boiling point and the melting point. Yes, technically, you can have an alkyne. It can have like an alcohol group coming off of it or something. But for our purposes here, we're looking at just an alkyne. Nothing else coming off of it. So I think there are examples over here. Don't worry about these namings. They're going over functional groups that you've never seen before. So just cross it out and put crazy across it or something. So if you can do the example we just did, you'll be fine. They're nonpolar. What does that mean? Yes. And how do you have a dipole moment? Yeah. So basically it's saying there's not an electronegative atom in there. Okay? Since there's not an electronegative atom in there, there's no dipole moment. So it says it's insoluble in water. So remember, like dissolves like. Water is very polar. It has oxygen in there. Since water is polar and alkyne is nonpolar, they're going to repel each other. Okay, this will be similar to oil and water. So it prefers other organic solvents, meaning other solvents that have a lot of carbons on them. A triple bond, um, if you remember, is sp hybridized. So a, a single bond, an alkane, is what hybridization? sp3. An alkene would be sp2, so then the triple bond is sp. And how many p orbitals are there total shapes? Three. So if this is sp hybridized, how many p's would we not use? Two. If there's three, we've only used one here to hybridize. So those two left over are what make up your triple bond. Because you have one P, or like one um, bond there, and the other two, the other additional one are your pi bonds. So everything has a sigma bond. Your multiple bonds are your pi bonds. Okay? So how many sigma in a triple? A sigma, one sigma, and then how many pi? Two pi. So a triple bond is one sigma, two pi. Sigma bond is always stronger than a pi, mainly because it hybridizes. So there's a more electron density there, so it's harder to break. So when we do reactions, what's breaking or reacting, if you want, are your pi bonds. And we have two of those. That's why reactions tend to happen twice for a triple bond. Um, also, as we kind of discussed in the naming, uh, these are sp hybridized, so they're linear. So the angle between your branches are 180 degrees. So that's why there's no cis or trans. They literally are just a straight line. It, they don't go up or down, they're just straight. 
uh, bond lengths. This is just to show you that your single bond is the longest bond. You don't have to memorize these numbers, but just show you it's 1.54 angstroms. A double bond is a little shorter at 1.33, and the triple bond is even shorter at 1.2. So what this is basically saying is that your triple bond is your shortest bond, and also your strongest bond all together, mainly because it's three bonds versus one. Okay, let's look here, uh, we're looking at pKa. pKa, remember, is very similar to like pH, okay? So if I have a low pH, is that acidic or basic? Acidic. And the big thing with pKa, it's not bound between 0 and 14. So you can go way above 14 and below 0. So if we look at a regular alkane, and we look at how acidic, if you want, a hydrogen off of there is. And acidity, you're kind of looking at the reactivity. Uh, the pKa is 50. Okay, so would you say that in terms of acidity, is that really reactive? That, does that seem high or low? High, right? 50, think of it in terms of pH. Okay, that would be high, very high. Um, and then we look at a, a double bond, and we look at the acidity of one of these hydrogens coming off of here, and we see that the pKa is 44. So it's a little lower, right? But would you still consider that very reactive? To give you an example, um, hydrochloric acid has a pKa of negative 7. Okay, so you can see what an extremely reactive acid would be. Okay. Then we can look at ammonia, which is considered a pretty basic, and it has a pKa of 35, just to compare. So these are more basic than ammonia. And then finally, if we look at the triple bond, and this is the point of this whole entire graph, uh, do you see the pKa drops all the way down to 25? Now, that's nothing to really brag about, you know, considering hydrochloric acid is negative 7. But look here, um, go from a single bond to a double bond, uh, it dropped six points there, but 44 to 25 is a pretty significant drop. So this triple bond there, um, the electronics and everything involved there, make a hydrogen coming off of there semi-acidic. Okay, we'll just say that. So if you put a very reactive base in there, like amide, uh, it'll have an acid-base reaction. So if I show you, So here's what you're putting in there, the amide, or amide, how you want to say it. This is what happens. So let's look here. If I have an acid, what does it do? Donate to hydrogen. And what does a base do? Accepts the hydrogen. This right here, remember sodium, what is that? It's just there to kind of balance the charge. It's, it means it's a negative charge. Okay. This base right here is very, very, very basic. Okay, it's a strong base. So I'll put it in here with this um, triple bond. This hydrogen here is halfway decently acidic. Not that much, but a little bit. Enough that if I put a really strong base in there, it's going to react. So again, what will this hydrogen do? This is my acid, so what's it going to do? Go, like, go away, right? And go to the base. So you see here, that base, do you see that that hydrogen is not there anymore? The base took off that hydrogen. See, this was NH2, now it's NH3. So the point of all of this is that a triple bond, if it has a hydrogen coming off of it, that's the key, um, it's slightly acidic, so if you put, it in a strong, put a strong base in there in your beaker, um, it'll take the hydrogen off. So that's sort of like one of your reactions, if you want. It's very simple. You have a terminal triple bond. And let me show you why it has to be terminal. If it was internal, like in the middle. Do I have any hidden hydrogens there? 
No, both sides already have four bonds, so there's no hydrogen to take off. The hydrogen has to directly be coming off the triple bond. Not over here, but on the triple bond. If I look here, if I cover up that hydrogen, how many bonds are there? Three. So there's that fourth bond is that hydrogen. So only a terminal uh, triple bond can react like this, which means a triple bond at the end of a chain. So this is going to be my acid, and I'm going to put NH2 minus in there as my base. So if we kind of just look at the mechanism here, this lone pair wants to grab what? Hydrogen. And so there's this bond here, then you have to decide what's more electronegative, carbon or hydrogen? Carbon. So those electrons will all go to carbon. Electronegativity, it means you love electrons, you're attracted to them. So anytime there's a bond between something that's about to break, it will always go to the more electronegative atom between the two. So when I do this, what did I just do? When I um, made this arrow, what did I put on there? Not a carbocation. I put a lone pair on there because both of these electrons are going to this triple bond. So let's look at this. Uh, what would be the formal charge there? Negative. Yeah, the carbon is positive. And then NH2 now becomes what? NH3. How many lone pairs on there now? One. And it will be neutral. So all I did was take off a hydrogen and made this negatively charged carbon. And that's sort of a reaction. It's kind of... If you stop at this point, it's pointless, okay? But let me show you the point of doing this. It's to add one more step. So just to make this negatively charged, if I did nothing else with it, then you really have done nothing. It's You've wasted your time. <laughs> but if I reacted further, let's see if we can figure this out. So I'm just rewriting this. Okay, we're starting with this. Now let's react it with something like this. Is a negative charge stable? No, any charge is unstable, so it wants to react. And let's look at here, where anytime you want to find something that's reactive, well, first you can look for a charge. So we know this is reactive right here because it has a charge. And over here, this is neutral, but do you see it has an electronegative atom on there? That's where it's going to react. Because if we look uh, between carbon and chlorine, which one's more electronegative? Chlorine. So chlorine has this partial negative, which puts what partial charge on carbon? Partial positive. Do you think that this negative charge will be attracted to that partial positive? Yes. So that's why electronegative, electronegative atoms make carbons reactive, because they give them a partial positive charge. So what happens is this lone pair is going to make a bond right there. Now, does that carbon like that right now? No. Because if we look, how many bonds are on this carbon? Four. When you put in the hidden hydrogens, so there's a total of four. So does it want to have five? No. So what will leave? Chlorine. What type of reaction is this? We did these like E1, E2, SN1, SN2. Substitution? Yeah. Which one? Did we form a carbocation? No. Two, because you see everything's happening at once. This will attack and the leaving group leaves. So this is just an SN2 reaction. That's it. So let's see what happens when I do this. So chlorine leaves, so I'm just going to put Cl minus here. 
And let me just redraw the triple bond. Okay, and how many carbons did it just attach to itself? Starting right here, one, two, three, four. Do you see that? So what it did, it attached one, two, three, four carbons to itself. And if you want, maybe this will make it easier if I rewrite it this way. So this is just the condensed form of this. So then it, when it reacts, here's my triple bond. And I'm adding CH2, 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 CH3. I don't know if it helps you to see it better that way. But this is now attached, or I should say, those two are attached together. Because when I, when I do this arrow, I'm making these lone pairs bond right there. So they're attached. What did that just do to my triple bond? Well, it's stable, but what else? Is it longer, perhaps? More carbons? Yeah, I was able to make uh, this triple bond longer, so I made an, a carbon-carbon bond. This triple bond had one, two, three, four carbons. Now it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's the point of taking that hydrogen off there, is so you can further react it. And in this case, in this type of reaction, you're going to make the chain longer. So if we look at another one, see if you can figure out the product you would get here. go ahead and add a carbon there. And those are two steps. There we go. This is not connected there. Yeah, so if I, there, they're not connected, so that's step one, and that's step two. So I think about the point of step one, and then the point of step two. Yeah, there's two lone pairs here, and there's lone pairs on the chlorine too, if you want to draw them. I was kind of thinking about this. What does NH2 minus do? This amide, what does it do? Takes away hydrogen where? Oh, the terminal triple one. So if I just draw what happens with that step, just so we can see it, it's literally just going to make that triple bond a negative charge. This is what happens with step one. Now, what about with step two? Yeah, it's going to bond where the chlorine is. And then will the chlorine leave? Yes. Yeah, so we have to think about it's going to be attached 
at that carbon specifically. So if I redraw my triple bond, okay, I have one, two, three, four carbons. I'll do the branch in a minute. Uh, one, two, three, four. Do you count? One, two, three, four. And then my branch is on, so it's second to the end, right? Always double check all your carbons. Those won't change when you combine them. So do you see that this has how many carbons? Three total. One, two, three. And this one has one, two, three, four, and then five. So I have three and five. That's a total of eight. So you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then your branch makes eight. How did you draw it? Oh, you flip, okay. That doesn't matter. As long as it's coming off the second carbon to the end. So all this is doing, the first step is just to make your triple bond reactive, putting that negative charge on there. And then step two, the point of the reaction is to add a carbon chain to there to make this longer. So let's keep that in mind. And let's look at this other reaction that's, in my opinion, is almost identical. Now, it's not going to look identical when you look at it. You're going to panic or something. But it is, and I'll show you. So I'm going to go ahead and just show this already reactive. So I'm going to show with a negative charge. And let's react it with this. Like that step one and step two, I'm going to put some random acid in there. All right. So what, um, if we're looking at the triple bond, what part of it's reactive? Get a terminal where the negative charge is. Now, on this structure here, which carbon do you think is reactive? The second one. Look for the one with the electronegative atom on it. Does this have an electronegative atom? This one? This one? Yes. So look for the electronegative atom, because what partial charge will this have? Partial positive. The carbon with the electronegative atom will always have a partial positive. So I'm going to draw an arrow. I'm going to use these lone pairs, and I'm going to make a bond to that carbon. It's always, again, always a carbon with the electronegative atom. Does that carbon want an extra bond? No, because it already has four. So what do you think happens? Yeah, one of these double bonds. I'm going to go up to oxygen to make a lone pair. Now, the difference between this one and this one, so do you see that, okay, when this, if I make a bond right here, what does this bond do? Where does it move to? Not that, well, like right here, where it moves to the CL and makes what? A lone pair, right? And so do you see that I'm only connected by one bond? Over here, the only difference, I'm connected by two bonds. The same thing happens. Do you see one, the bond goes up to become a lone pair? It's still connected there because there's two instead of one bond, but it's the same thing. So let's draw what we just did here. Uh, one, two, three, four bonds on my triple bond. Are we okay with this much? Okay, now the hard part is showing what we did here. So I'm going to try to draw this the best that I can 
so you can see it. It might not look pretty, but it doesn't matter. Okay, let's draw kind of the basic structure. Uh, and then right here, how is that connected? A double or a single bond? Single. So I'll have here, here, here. Okay, so all I did was just redraw this with a single bond. Make sure that makes sense. Now, what do I need between here and there? Single bond. Because that's what that arrow just did. It made a bond there. So I'm making a bond between the two. If you want, I'm anchoring them together. And then let's look at oxygen. What would be the charge there? Negative. Because it, it should have six valence electrons it's using, and it's using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's a negative charge. You can always draw it like this. I mean, I could make it look nicer, but I think it's easier to see if you draw it like this. Now, there's only one final step here. Do we like to have charges in our final product? No. So what do you think this does? What's the point of step two? Reacts with the hydrogen, yeah, to neutralize itself. So it's just going to grab that hydrogen. So all I have to do is redraw it with that hydrogen there. Now it's OH. So let's look at what happened overall. Um, did we increase the number of carbons? Yes. Yeah. Well, from here, if this is our starting material, when we added this to the beaker, we increased the number of carbons bonded, right? To the triple bond. What else did we put on there? OH, an alcohol group. Uh, look at the above reaction. Did we put an alcohol group on there? No, all it did was increase the number of carbons. So that's the difference between them. Um, either you want an alcohol on there, or you don't. How do I know an alcohol will be on the end, like in the final product? The, yeah, there's oxygen right there. If there's an oxygen as one of your reagents, then you're going to have the OH. I look on here, was there an oxygen there? No, just like a chlorine leaving group. So let's look at these. Uh, let's predict the product of these. See if you could draw out what you would get. So let's have the same starting material. Oh, let me go ahead and put a negative charge again. Make it a little easier. Okay, so look at both of those and see if you can draw the product. Now, if you need to do the mechanism to get it, that's fine. But we'll compare at the end the product that you're going to get.
Okay, let's kind of look at this. Um, which one, the top or the bottom, will have the alcohol at the end? The bottom one. And how did you know that? The oxygen. So let's look at the top one first, though. What is that going to do? Say that again. So, yeah, and then the CL will leave. So I'm just making this carbon chain longer. So how many? So let's redraw the triple bond. Am I missing? There you go. So that's the triple bond. And then the group that we're adding to it, what does it look like? A T. So I go bond over and make the T. Okay, so basically when you do this, um, there was a chlorine at, so if I take the chlorine off, it looks like that. So it's where the chlorine was. That's how it's going to bond. So instead of, so you draw this much, and instead of drawing a bond to chlorine, you draw, you know, a bond to your triple bond there. Okay. So everybody, does this make sense? So all I did is I combined, when I do this, my triple bond with this carbon structure. Now what about the bottom one here? So it's going to start off the same way. I draw my triple bond. Yeah, I'm going to bond. So here's my anchor. I'm going to bond to a carbon, because the carbon right there, with two hydrogens coming off of it. And then oxygen. And then how, well, what will the oxygen look like at the very end? OH, yeah. So do you see, like, this part looks like this part here. So you triple bond. Do the anchor because you need to make that new bond, so your new anchor. And then you just draw this with the OH. Notice, because the book for some reason splits these up. I already had this written down before. I I'll give you a second. So if I flip back over here, first notice this. Do you see I have two hydrogens coming off of here? Okay. Now let me flip over here. What do I have coming off of here? Two carbon groups. Did that really affect the reaction at all? I mean, besides that you put two carbon groups coming off of there versus hydrogen, but did it, is it in, does it affect the mechanism, is what I'm asking. It, it was the same exact mechanism, right? So this here, by any chance, and it's okay if you don't, because I haven't taught this yet, do you know what functional group this is? So a functional group would be like alcohol, alkane, alkene, alkyne. No, that's okay. Uh, this is called a ketone. <laughs> this is a ketone. You'll recognize it. This is how you know. This is this part right here. Do you see carbon double bonded to oxygen? That's called a carbonyl. Okay? So you'll have a carbonyl. And do you see coming off the carbonyl, I have two carbon groups? It doesn't matter what those carbon groups are. They could be large, small. These are just methyls, so they're small. So it's a carbonyl plus two carbon branches, I guess we can say. That is a ketone.
This is something that we'll definitely go over in organic too. So if I flip this over, look at this here. Do you see a carbonyl in there? C double bond O. But does it have two carbon groups coming off of it? No, it has what? Hydrogen. So this is called an aldehyde. I think hide, kind of like hydrogen. Okay, so it, an aldehyde has a carbonyl plus, and the best way to say this is at least one hydrogen branch. I'll show you what I mean by that. So this has two hydrogen branches. Uh, you could have an aldehyde like this. So you see it has a hydrogen and a carbon branch. So if at least one of the branches coming off is a hydrogen, it's an aldehyde. A ketone, both of them are carbon groups. So it would have been maybe something like that. So you see both of them are carbon groups. This is the ketone. This is the aldehyde. Aldehyde always has a hydrogen coming off of there, off of your carbonyl. Anyway, so it didn't matter if I reacted it with a ketone or an aldehyde. You still end up with an alcohol with that carbon group there. Okay? So the, the book tries to split it up and show you that there's a triple bond reacting with an aldehyde or a triple bond reacting with a ketone. And honestly, it doesn't matter. Ketone, aldehyde is the same exact reaction. You know, I, I, didn't, when I gave you this to do. I didn't even tell you it was an aldehyde. You probably didn't even realize it was anything different than what we did over here. Because it's really not. I mean, it is technically, but it won't react any differently. Okay, so let's take a break. And so those are the three reactions we've done so far. And the rest, I think, are very similar to the double bond.
All right, so let's go ahead and start back up. So let's look what we've done here. We've done the triple bond reacting with a carbon group. We've done a triple bond adding to a carbonyl. That was a ketone. There's an aldehyde. And that's good. All right, so let's look at this uh, dehydrohalogenation, like how to make a triple bond. It's a good slide here. Okay, so whenever you make a double bond, okay, so let's say this is what we have here, and I want to make a double bond, or let me actually write it over here. So how do I make a double bond? What type of reactions? There's two types. Elimination. So either E1 or E2. Okay, so let's look at E2 because those are easier. I'm just going to put a base in there. So hydroxide. All right, and if we look on here, uh, the, the double bond that would be made is right there. I'm just reviewing this really quick. This is chapter 7. The base will take off a hydrogen because that's what a base does. And this hydrogen will leave its electrons right here. And what does that form when it does that? The double bond. And that will force the leaving group to leave. So the point of the base is to take the hydrogen off. So it will leave its electrons to form the double bond which causes the leaving group to leave. So it's just like this chain reaction. Now let's think of this in terms of a uh, triple bond. Okay, let's look at the difference here. Do you see I have two leaving groups, right, instead of one? And then I'm going to put um, two equivalents of base, so kind of a two-to-one ratio. Yeah, it's two OHs. So I'm going to put two times the amount of base as I have this structure here. So what do you think happens? This is going to do what? Yeah, well, if we do one at a time. So if I do one step, take a hydrogen. Hydrogen leave its bond where? In the middle to form a double bond, which causes one of the chlorines to leave. Huh? Yeah, it's a two. We're going to have two of those. So I just use one of them. So what do you think the other one does? Same exact thing. Now it's going to take off this hydrogen. Where does hydrogen leave its electrons? To make, to make the triple bond in the middle here. When the chlorine will leave. So really it's the same exact thing. It just ha it happens twice. So to be able to do that, you need um, two leaving groups, really, is the biggest requirement. So this is also just a form of, of an elimination, you know, like an E2. Maybe you want to call it a double E2. So that's all you need to know about how to actually make a triple bond. 
usually you're not making a triple bond. Usually you've already, like, you bought the triple bond, so you don't actually have to make it. But if you ever wanted to make one, that's how you do it. Just do a double elimination. Okay, so the rest of these, well, on that one was there. The rest of these reactions are similar to the alkene double bond reactions. But just like the one we just did, the big difference is that it will occur twice. So let's look at what I'm talking about here. Let's look at uh, this, for example. Actually, let's not look at that one. Let's look at this other one. I'm going to do them out of order because this will be better. This will make more sense. two in front of it, and let's compare it to the double bond. What is this add across a double bond? A, chlorine, a hydrogen and a chlorine, right? And is this Makarnikov or anti-Makarnikov? Makarnikov. Not that this one matters. It's actually the same. Um, so I'd put a hydrogen on one side, a chlorine on the other side. Now, knowing that, and I'm telling you, the same exact thing happens, but twice, okay? What do you think this looks like? What do I have right here? Two hydrogens. What do I have right here? Two chlorines. So do you see I literally just did the reaction twice? And they'll add to the same side. So if you add a hydrogen to that side in the triple bond, you'll add the other hydrogen to the exact same carbon. They won't, you know, you won't add one hydrogen there and the other hydrogen here. They'll go to the same carbon. Uh, let me think of another one that happens. What do you think happens? Again, knowing this, comparing it to a triple or a double bond. What do you think happens there? If I had just bromine with a double bond, what does it add across a double bond? Two bromines. So now I have four bromines. And where will they add? What? Two on each side. So bromine there, bromine there, bromine there, bromine there. So notice it's the two carbons that make up the triple bond. Because if I look, I have, if I look at this, how many bromines do I have? Two, but I have two of those, so I have, so two times two would be four. And how many did I just add? Four. Now, one thing that could occur with these, is, and I think they do this on the homework, um, you can add one equivalence or two equivalents, okay? Equivalence is kind of your ratio. So basically, are you going to react it one time or two times? Okay? So let's look at the difference there. Or for both of these here, not the middle one, but this one and this one, how many times did I react that? Twice. So this one would say you have two equivalents of it, or, and, I, and that's why I put the two. That means two equivalents, meaning you're going to react this two times. So you're going to have a two-to-one ratio of those. So in a beaker, I'm going to put twice as much bromine as I am this triple bond so that it reacts two times. Now let's think about if I um, did the same reaction, this bromine reaction, but only put in one equivalence of Br2. So how many Brs do I have? How many bromines? I only have two total. So how many times does it react? One time. That's what the one equivalence means. 
So over here, a triple bond, an alkyne went down to an al cane. So if I react it one time, what will I have there? A double bond, because only one of the bonds will react. And what will I have right here? Br and Br. So I just have two bromines I'm going to add. And then I'm only going to react with one of the multiple bonds from the triple bond, because I'm only putting one equivalence. Now let's look at the above, above reaction. And what would that look like if I just put in one equivalence of HCl. Yeah, I would have a double bond. So anytime you have one equivalence, you're always going to have a double bond there. So I'm going to have a double bond. And what will I have right here? A hydrogen. And then right here, chlorine. So you see it only reacted one time and only took away one bond because I only have one equivalence. So again, one equivalence will always end up with an alkene. They'll end up with a double bond there. And if I have two equivalents, it's going to go all the way down to the alkane, meaning a single bond. So it's just, is it going to react one time or two times? And they have to tell you in the problem. They can't make you guess. Whereas they shouldn't make you guess, because then you won't know. If they don't tell you for some reason, and I don't know if the sapling does it, I can't remember. But if they don't tell you, assume it's two equivalents, because that's what you normally do, OK? Um, anyway, that's what I would do. So do you see that all these reactions are pretty much the same thing? Same thing as the double bonds. So now let's look at if I have this, which is the one we were about to look at. Okay, so how many hydrogens do I have here? Four. Two twos. So four. Um, so I'm adding two equivalents of it. So what happens there? What? Yes, yeah, so I'll show you the hydrogens, then I won't show you the hydrogens. So what will I have here? Hydrogen, hydrogen, and then here? Hydrogen, hydrogen. Now, do we always show hydrogens? No, so if I just take them away, what did I just do? Just got rid of the triple bond, right? I added enough hydrogens, so the triple bond is gone. So I went from an alkyne to what? An alkane. Okay, and there's only two other reactions I want to show you today, and then we'll quit for the day. They won't take very long, just because they go along with this one here. And then we'll just have uh, just a few, a handful more tomorrow, and then we'll be done with organic one. Okay, so one thing you can do with the triple bond is this. You put in a H2 palladium, okay? And then what you do is you put in, it's a catalyst, and it's called Lindlar's catalyst. And they literally will write Lindlar's catalyst on there, that you're, this is the name of the catalyst. Now let's look, how many hydrogens am I adding here? Two. Not four, right? Just two, because I would have put a two in front of it. Okay? So how many times does it react? 
one time, okay? This one will always react one time. There will never be a two in front of it. So there's, um, Lindlar's catalyst poisons this, basically, so it will only react one time. What this will always make, well, if I add two hydrogens, what will I have in the middle? What type of bond? Double bond. Okay, so anytime you react it once in this chapter, you end up with a double bond. So I'm going to have an alkene, but specifically the Lindlars will create uh, the cis alkene. What does cis mean? Same side. They're going to point in the same direction. So do you see these are my um, kind of two branches here? How are they pointing right now? Trans like? I mean, there's technically not a trans with a triple bond, but opposite. So uh, you're going to make them point in the same way. Or they could both point down. They have my two methyls, either pointing down or up, but they're pointing in the same direction. And I'm going to make my double bond. So this, if you see hydrogen with Lindlar's catalyst, always makes a cis alkene. Let me see which acid they're putting in there. Oops. And they said it. And the last one I want to go over. Before that I do that, let's, let's review really quick. So I have a triple bond. Can I put a strong base in there and take off a hydrogen if it's terminal? Yes. And that makes it reactive. So if I put an alkyl halide, like uh, this, this is an alkyl halide, it's an alkane with the halogen, what will that add to the triple bond? The carbon chain. If I add something like this to the triple bond, then OH with carbon chain. OK? Uh, then we looked at. How do you make a triple bond? A double elimination. So just put a base in there. Then we looked at these really quick. What does this add across the triple bond? Two hydrogens and two chlorines. And then this one, what's the difference? Just one hydrogen and one chlorine. So what type of bond? An alkene in the middle. Uh, what about this one here? How, what does it add? Four. Four bromines, and it'll be an alkane. And when I have one equivalence, I add how many? Two with what in between? An alkene. Then we looked at this one. What does this add across the triple bond? Four hydrogens, so an alkyne goes to an alkane. And then if I add in there some Lindlar's catalyst, what do I end up with? Cis what? Alkene. So then the final reaction for today, not final ever. You put in ammonia with sodium metal, like you literally chip off some sodium metal. The sodium, what it does, it causes a radical reaction, okay? And it's, I'm going to, the hydrogens are going to come from the ammonia, okay? So I have, let's see what I've made so far. And remember, these are all related, the reason I'm doing them together. I've gone from an alkyne to an alkane when I use four hydrogens. This one went from an alkyne to an alkene, making the cis. So what do you think is left? Not say the same? Trans. I think I heard somebody say trans. Maybe. We'll pretend if not. Trans alkene. Exactly. So I can make an alkane. Alkane doesn't have cis or trans. I can make the cis alkene. Or I can make the trans alkene now.
This one looks a little weird because you don't have like the H2 like you normally see. The hydrogens come from right here. But you will always end up with a trans alkene. So you can make either the cis or the trans depending on what you're doing. And the difference is just what you put in the beaker. If you put hydrogen, palladium with Lenlarge catalyst, then you, in the end you're going to make a cis alkene. If you put in sodium metal with ammonia, you're going to make the trans alkene. Uh, which, what do you mean by which two? Uh, yeah, that, and that's the best, that's the most efficient way to make it. There's other ways, but this, this gives a really good yield. So, And that's it for today. I'm letting you out early. Yay.